Hey Tubers, welcome back for another adventure. This engine came from Kingston, New York. I'm told um, it needs a head. I'm told it was pulled off an all-terrain vehicle because somehow it needs a, a head. That it's relatively low usage. Now, I'm not sure if somebody was in here already or not. You can see here, it's 125 cc's. It's got the three speed plus reverse. This is one of my favorite of the uh, made in China engines. Given that we just have no clue on the state of this engine, one of the last things you want to do is power up right, the starter and start spinning it around. Um, one could completely destroy the engine that way. So that's not where you want to start. As a matter of fact, I don't even want to turn it over because I don't, I don't know that this thing is complete. Always wondering where to get started. This is where I'm getting started. I'm going to take this bolt out and when I do, you could see that cover's coming off, and that lets me take a quick look at the timing chain and the sprocket, and I can kind of get a little idea of what they did here. Well, it looks like the sprocket's there, the chain's there. It looks like it's well oiled, right? You can see the oil floating around. Anyway, what's next? One, two, three, out. Four, five, six, seven, eight, and at that point, I could pull the head, and we could see what's going on inside here. Four bolts are out. Hmm. Looks everything like everything is there that belongs there. That's a good sign. I always like it when people put stuff back together again after they take it apart. You guys could see I got the gear off. Some of them come off easy, some of them come off hard. I had to kind of pry it a little bit to get that loose. You can see with this bolt here, a lot of times you kind of have to back it out. And some of them, um, you actually have to keep walking the head back to get them to come loose. So he says, well, that's never good. Yeah, it's got a rusty bore. Looks like there's no miles on it, but it was stored outside and the bore got rusty. So the head is off and he says it needs a head. I don't see that. As a matter of fact, it looks just fine to me. I mean, you got a little, little bad news of the piston right there. Let's get access to the uh, crank and uh, see what we could do with it. Turn? Yeah, you still turned. I don't know. <laughs> I think I'm just going to... Take the bore out, wipe it down, clean it up, make sure the timing's good, and see if this thing turns over, see what kind of compression it has. This thing might be a 100% winner for a $40 engine. This might be a, a bloody home run. So I wiped it out and cleaned it up. It's really pretty good. I mean, it's more than staining. As I slide my finger back and forth, I can feel a little something. But you know what? I'm, I want to see if this thing has any compression. So I don't, I don't think I'm going to take it apart. I think I'm going to start putting it back together. I'm going to clean up the head. And I'm going to spray some um, starting fluid in there to see if it leaks by the rings. Assuming it doesn't, I'm, uh, I'm feeling happy camper coming. So I put it all back together again. The compression was a little weak. I put some oil down it. The compression was still a little weak. So I could have bought 
a head for around 50 bucks or I could have bought everything to do a valve job decided to go with the valve job because that is a little better for people who actually may need to do a valve job on this um, when I did the compression check it was coming up um, dry somewhere around 30 40 um, and if I put oil in it it would kind of get to 60 and if you kept trying it it would work its way down so I I think I think it really does need a head so let's get to pulling this all back off and just doing a quick valve job um, hopefully that'll save the head and I could be moving again so everything I took off uh, we're gonna get to do that again right and this guy So all this junk has to come off. In addition, this cover needs to come off, which will allow me to slide the cam out and then get the valves off. I'll show you that in a minute. By the way, I did make sure that the uh, valves were adjusted properly, right? The last thing you want to have to do is pull it all apart and discover that uh, you just have the valves too tight. Once you get this cover, all the other covers off, right? There's a slide that kind of holds these on. You get those out. Um, take these guys out. Whichever way they come, sometimes you have to take the follower off and then this guy will come out. That's kind of a compression release. So, anyway, you take that apart. Then you slide the cam out. As a matter of fact, if we slide the cam out, that'll allow us to get these guys out easier. And uh, it's better to do it with two hands instead of one. <laughs> Cam's out. Right, these guys, just grab them out of there. Then you could get to the valves. So, this whole valve spring removal tool looks very complicated but all it is really is a big C clamp I personally recommend the kit um, they cost about 20 25 bucks give or take a little bit um, and what it does is you see one side of the C clamp that goes in and pushes the valve tight up against the head and the other side right pushes it in such that you could get the retainers out right so I'm gonna tighten that up it's gonna push it in now you want to allow yourself space you want to kind of do it over a tub because sometimes those little pieces get loose and trust me um, unless you're doing it on a white bench <laughs> with a white floor wearing white clothing and everything swept up if you lose control of them, they're going to be very hard to find. So I'm just going to tighten this up. And then you reach in with the needle nose and you pluck those two pins right out. And you put them someplace safe. I recommend doing the valves one at a time. I recommend using the same retainers. Those little half moon things that keep everything in place. I recommend getting the same retainers back in on the same valve. Um, they just sit better that way. I think you could see I could reach right in, pluck them right out of there. Notice where the bigger hole is, right? If I got to turn this a little bit to get to it. If this and or that bar were here, it would be hard to reach in, right? Just make things comfortable for yourself. Um, yeah, I think you guys could see that pretty well, right? That should be a piece of cake to pluck those right out of there. Um, and by the way, it's a lot easier to get them out than it is to put them back in. They always seem to fight on the way back in. So you guys could see what the valve seat looks like on the block side. And let me show you the valve itself. <laughs> the valve itself it doesn't look horrible horrible so we'll just just kind of give that a quick little cleanup and I think everything will 
be fine. She'll settle right in. And I'm going to pull the exhaust if it's basically the same situation. I'm not going to spend any time talking about it. If not, I'll show it to you. So I have some kind of bad news for me. If you put the valve in and you push it in and you hold it in and you could see daylight <laughs> around the valve seat, that is never, ever a good sign. Um, it appears as if the valve is warped. So I need, um, I need a valve for this. I definitely need an intake. I'm also going to pull the exhaust and take, take a look at that. Um, so the person who told me it needed a head actually told me the truth. It really does need a head. So there's a couple of places to go with this. One could order valves, and they're pretty cheap. Um, or one could just say, Uncle, and order a new head and kind of put this aside for parts. The 110cc head does not fit the 125. It appears as if when you look at these engines, you got the 50 and 70. The 90 uses some 50, 70 parts, some 110 cc parts. The 110, once again, uses all its own parts. Some, some of the 90 parts. Um, not too much of the 125. The 125 is mostly its own engine. But do remember, these engines are made all over the place. And... <laughs> Uh, there may be some engine, some pieces that swap back and forth. For the time being, I, I hate to let videos, um, just from a chronological point of view, go too long. So I'm going to kind of end this here, right? Um, I'm pushing the valve out. I'm going to kind of end this here and... Probably you'll see this engine again when the new head comes in and I smash it on About buying tools. That's never ever a bad thing. A lot of times you can use them again in the future um, So that's not bad. I am I think I'm gonna put this back together again just so that it um, It all the pieces are in one place, right? It's kind of tough when you have an envelope of parts in a bag of parts in a box of engine and before you know it somehow things get separated anyway in the meantime I want to thank you all for dropping by to watch and comment and subscribe please remember to keep your feet down your heads up and get out and enjoy each and every day bye now